Just can have a repeat performance. Ambition, of course, did look good as well. Granted, he got in Italy, which is a fairly strong champion, but he had some really good pressure, particularly in that mid lane that we watched. So, interesting band so far. MF band by HGK, Echo band as well. Caitlyn band once again by Samsung Galaxy, and they will respect the Nidalee on the red side and ban that away here as well. Not expecting too many other junglers to get taken down, as Crown's Victor are actually going to get taken out here as well. And there's the instant answer, Syndra from Samsung Galaxy. So, not too much left open. Uh, Rise is left open, That's which was banned previously. Jace is also on the table, which was banned previously. Um, we know Odoamne likes to gravitate towards that, but the Poppy is still up, so Cubey could play that into it. Yeah, I think the Jace ban was a uh, kind of like reaction to the Poppy ban. You don't mm -hmm. want to give one without the other one being up. And I think Olaf's still up, so I could see them trying to take it, maybe first or second rotation. Yeah, because Ambition does play that champion. Yeah. Ambition is kind of interesting because he has like that mix of the Korean and he really quickly adapted to the Western meta of picking up Olaf, picking up Skarner. So. <laughs> yeah, he's a very, like, he defines his own meta kind of thing. He likes to expand his champ pool to other things that most players are afraid to do. And I, I respect that a lot from Ambition. Oh yeah, we've been seeing Samsung just do that overall, right? Uh, Zyra, bottom lane in the support, and then you know that Samsung was scrimming across the bracket, so the question is, who brought out the answer to the Zyra support with the misfortune that's AP? Was it Gorilla first, or was it Core JJ? You know? I heard it's definitely Core JJ. He seemed like, from what people have said, I heard Spirit said on his stream that it's Core JJ too, so, I mean, Core JJ is a creative player. Samsung, in general, is a creative team. They like to think uh, outside the box and come up with these creative strategies that most team aren't prepared for. Well, we'll see what happens here in the rest of the draft. First pick rise for HGK is kind of expected here, but the obvious answer, of course, Zyra, Olaf for Samsung Galaxy. We saw the same rotation actually from HGK on red side in game one. Looks certainly like a strong start for them, but MF was the answer on the other side. Looks like Karma Lee Sin, and that is going to be support Karma, you have to think, with uh, Rise already locked in. I mean, it does feel like only two teams would have picked it up. I doubt Rox would have shared it with uh, SKT, given that they had to play them in the semis, and they did seem surprised by it yesterday. So, Maybe Samsung and Rocks are the only two teams that had it. Samsung, good to see they had it prepared, and HK unfortunately aren't going to get the same luxury here. What does Ruler want to do there? Like hovering yeah, I think Jin. it's the Jin. He uh, loves Jin. Yeah, I just think that Jin Zyra is a way better lane than, than Ezreal Zyra. Like, you eat a root, you eat a CC, you're getting a follow up there, regardless of who hits first. It's no MF Ash, but Ash, I guess, not as attractive with the Misfortune Band away. So Samsung will just lock in these picks here. We actually have our jungle matchup locked in already, though. Of course, yeah. the other lanes will be important to see kind of how effective they can be. But we do kind of have two aggressive junglers. Olaf and Yankos look good in game one. Ambition takes that away here. And Lee Sin's actually the answer, which is interesting. The only jungle ban was Nidalee. So curious to guys, what you think about the current state of the draft for the junglers here? I think uh, Lee Sin's good into squishy comps, especially like Jin, Zyra, both in mobile carries. Jankos, he likes to go on those back line. And if he can insect perhaps the Jin or Zyra, it can help this team a lot. I'm kind of worried about the one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's, you don't really win up front against Olaf. That's just how the champion works. But if Lee Sin is able to maneuver around Olaf, he can probably pressure on away from him and snowball that advantage. Yeah, you have way more tools to avoid him. So going and invading on the Olaf isn't that bad, but if you get caught out, like it's awful. You just get completely obliterated. Uh, but looking at the draft though, H2K, I think this might be a little more mid-focused for them. I can really see the Lee Sin wanting to go towards the Rise lane that has the two-second snare against the Cassiopeia. I feel like that's the lane that I would camp. I feel like there's a lot of other setup in the yeah. lanes either. I mean, There's way I, more setup for Samsung. Yeah, Ambition have a ton of good places to go. Maybe not top lane is the obvious one, but bottom lane is just like a freebie for uh, all that. Uh, well, the bottom one is like a freebie, but the top lane, hey, you're up against a Rumble. Rumble has very low mobility. He's actually quite easy to get to, especially with an acceleration gate. You hit him with one axe, he pretty much has to flash the first axe you throw. Yeah, that's a tough time for Rumble. Not being very immobile, the first axe will make you just die pretty much. Yep. <laughs> um, I think the mid lane is pretty safe with the cleanse. The rise root gets countered pretty hard by it. If I was Lee Sin, I'd probably focus top just because that matchup is very snowball-y. And in this meta, against Kuve, you kind of need to stop his split push pressure from going off. Well, we saw it in the Echo last game, so Jace, We've seen actually Oda himself do a lot of work on the champion. Doesn't want to take it here though, decides that Rumble may be a little bit better overall for the comp. So, kind of curious to see. 
how that works out here. Again, though, Yankos is such an aggressive jungle. We expect him to continue that trend here. Ambition strikes me as a pretty smart player. A little farm heavy, perhaps, but knows kind of where he wants to be on the map. Loves these big farm heavy jungles where he can maneuver quickly around the map. We saw that game on with Nidalee. I think both these players kind of got junglers that suit them. Olaf can play to Ambition style. Listen, definitely suits Yanko. Absolutely. Olaf has the versatility of having a very quick clear. Uh, he's actually in a pretty good matchup as well, so he doesn't have to worry too much about the Lee Sin bullying him around. And he also has the option of, you know, going for those ganks with a lot of lanes that have the gank assistance. But the Lee Sin for Yankos has actually been one of his signature champions. You go back to when he first joined the league on, uh, I think it was, uh, oh, it was that Polish team is like KML or something like that. Uh, KLM. <laughs> I think is what it was, uh, that eventually became Rockat. Like, he was just absolutely dominating on this champion. Well, just a reminder, guys, we load ourselves into game number two. Please get your questions up. Give me a tweet. I do love tweets. Use the hashtag <laughs> AskTheCasters. I'll answer some of your genius questions live on air. Had a couple, uh, quite a lot of good questions yesterday. Some nice ones there in game one. So love to hear your questions, particularly about jungle, as we are going to focus on that matchup here in this particular game. You can already see HGK peeking their heads into this top half of the map. I like, like that level one by uh, Samsung. It's pretty much, hey, we're going to do your level one and hopefully you're just not going to expect it. <laughs> well, like Ambition has his red buff ordered, but won't be too upset by the situation. He's going to play it safe, check the brushes with his axes as he goes, and looks like he'll even kind of take a long way around waiting for the axe cooldown. Actually has it. They're just hoping no one's in the bushes. Going to check them one by one. That's Kube there to help him, and now they know that there's nothing there, but of course, is water for HGK, so they'll have that information there as well. That's kind of it, though, as far as wards go. There's actually no deep wards for Samsung that I can see, and just the one for H2K. But the one from H2K is actually going to give them a decent amount of information. Uh, the Olaf will clear, and I believe that ward will still be up by the time he gets there. Maybe just barely. I wonder be interesting time, if, yeah, if there's anything kind of creative planned here, because yeah. both junglers are going to start on the same side. You can't say Ambition's going to get spotted. No, as you started Krogs. But yeah, because actually passing towards the bottom lane. So no potential like cheesiness coming out with an invade. Just wanted the information. If I was Lee Sin here, I'd do my Wolves red and then just do a level three bot. They're playing really aggressive and playing up, and they're both both. All right, they're both in mobile, and Olaf showed he's on red right now. So. Normally, Olaf's prefer a full clear just because you get low and you're just so, like, your clear is just so fast because you're mm -hmm. taking more damage, lower your health is, you do more damage. I actually love this from Yankos. Uh, doesn't go for the blue, he's going to hand it off to Ryu later. This is actually the route that Peanut does on Lee Sin. You go your small camps first, you do all three small camps, and then you can do your red, or you look for the gank and you stay around mid. Or you can go and contest the enemy blue. It's like a really, really free route. And I actually have a question then for you two here as far as junglers go, because I think Something you just said, Anori, about like looking at the map and kind of figuring out where you want to go is something that's so crucial for junglers because there is so much decision making. Early on when you're pathing, how much of your brain is like watching the minimap or having information communicated to your lanes and just figuring out like where you could maybe look for a gank or look for some pressure? Like how much of that early game is important as far as watching the minimap, maybe in solo queue, and then of course having your teammates really information early on as well. Um, when I'm jungling, or I think most junglers, you just Permanently, are you looking at the mini map? Mm -hmm. It should be like your primary focus. You doing the jungle camp should be on your like corner of your eye. You should be always focusing on the mini map. You have to constantly be looking at your lanes, looking at HP, looking at lane situations. It just lets you pad towards where you need to be. So if I saw top lane, I was like, hey, top lane's getting shoved in. They're kind of low. It's like they're both half help. Like the enemy jungler might be up there. I should probably pad towards top side. So you should always plan your pads like 30 seconds in advance to where you think the lane's going to need pressure. Yeah, I actually didn't like this from Yankos in terms of pathing. He went in and he invaded. He got some information on Olaf. But Ryu actually backed for an early tier. Uh, so now he'll probably get handed the blue off. But this also gives the information to Samsung that the blue hasn't been taken yet. So if Samsung were in a better position, they could actually contest it and take it away. Whereas Yankos could have actually just given it to Ryu ahead of time. It's a choice. Well, it does have some info at least, so spotted Ambition. Didn't get to counter jungle any of his camps, but Ambition is flying through the jungle, which is stock standard for Olaf, but it's got a crab control, might be nice. Ambition though has snuck in here, and if you're Odo you have to know that if Olaf's going to be anywhere he's here, and great ward from Odo as a result. Yeah, last time you saw him was Raptors, and then you basically wait for the time that it takes him to clear. He's not in the river, you know that as well from Scuttle. Mm -hmm. It took a while to hand this blue off, it kind of sucks, because Rumble had to shove top, and it's like... Rumble's getting shoved in. Yeah. And so it's kind of weird, but. Yeah, and right now you can see that this is what I was talking about, where yep. now Olaf just cuts off the uh, the rise from getting to mid. So Ryu can't actually get it handed off to him. 
think at this point you just take the blue. Don't, don't risk it going to the enemy mid laner because that's like the worst case scenario. Yeah. If he's, if he's getting shoved in mid, it's just the situation. But this this is I actually think this is just flat out bad. Um, because this means that the next blue that your mid laner will ever get, it's gonna be like four minutes past when uh, Crown's gonna have his. Yeah, so. it was pretty poor by them. It's pretty important to get blues on yeah. like Rise or in a Cassio matchup, it's scary if they have a blue and you don't, because she'll spam spells on you, and you have no way to react to it. Yeah, I, I think that I think he should have given the blue over to Ryu before Ryu backed. I know it sounds like really bad to do that, because you're like, oh, you're wasting blue time, but he wasn't gonna get it afterwards. He went for an early invade. Yeah, the early invade was kind of weird. Uh, yeah. I guess he wanted to find Olaf for his top lane. His top lane was pushing, but. I think he should have just done the blue anyways. Yeah, he got one Raptor off of it. <laughs> that was it. And you know, losing 20, 30 seconds perhaps on the overall buff time is, is bad, but uh, losing a complete desynchronization of your time is worse. So, I mean, at this point, Ambition, he just got a blue that Yankos or Ryu didn't get, right? Like, yeah. it's six minutes in, you usually take that next blue as a mid laner at 7.20, 7.30, that sort of standard time. And like, we're getting to that point here. It just feels like Yankos is now starting it. I, th I assume, or maybe just going to I think grump. he just does his grump. Yeah. I, I think you don't want to desync your timers too much, so you actually wait for like seven minutes to hand it off. So Which it's the standard it's time. Kind of the standard time again, you get back on track. But there really isn't much else for him to do in the jungle unless the wolves are coming up like right now. So he'll probably do it. The problem with this is the longer the buff is up, it goes past like two to three levels. It yeah. loses experience value a lot. And now it's like they're going to respawn a fresh blue, which is going to have its level six experience value. So. It's going to be missing out on a lot of experience. It doesn't sound like much, but it actually means a lot for solo yeah. laners. Like, uh, people don't usually think of leveling up as a, a combat stat increase. It's just like, oh, I have another ability, which is very important early on. Mm -hmm. But it's actually a lot of combat stats. Like, you're handed, I want to say, about 400 gold in just overall stats. If you're adding up, like, three armor, like, a yep. couple magic resistance here and there, and just eight flat HP. So it's like the guy got a kill. And it's one of those things where jungle XP is something that kind of everyone knows about, but I certainly would never have remembered. So great point there as we have Yankos sneaking into top lane. In fact, Ambition's going bottom as well. Going to look for Forgiven. Nice spell shield. Vanda now the target, but exhaust and a pretty easy disengage for HGK's bottom lane. Yeah, I think they missed the Zyra rune. I think at that point, you don't all in. Oh, hello. Yep, level six. Kick back in. Kube is six. Good ulti there from Oda One Name. Kube not going to burn the flash. He's down. And Yankos first blood again. Yep, really well done there. And Clean. he's only lost one game so far when he's had first blood, but it was this series. And this is really good, too. He saw Olaf on the bottom side of the map. He can go get the red. But his team has to do something about the Infernal, since he's not going to do anything about it. They cannot do something about the Infernal, unfortunately, for them. So nice trade-off there for Ambition and the rest of his team. Yankos taking what individual advantage he can get here, but the team advantage for Samsung. So watch this one again. Just such a clean kick. It's really nice. Really well played there. Had the patience. Knew that Qve wanted to once again reestablish lane dominance, and he doesn't have teleport, so he actually loses multiple waves there. I think we see the difference between EU and KR in regions right now. EU prioritizes this kill over KR that prioritizes the objective, and overall, the way you play this game is objective. So it's nice to get the kill, and that's good gold onto like Jankos, but the game that fire elemental is something you really need to focus more on. I think last game they didn't get any dragons at all. It was kind of disappointing because you have such a huge they got, they got one ocean. One ocean. One ocean. It was yeah. like the one that they didn't really want. Yeah. <laughs> it's the mountain drakes made all the difference. Yeah, those are really good to get, especially if you want to snowball a game. Because if you're scared of your leaking comp or dragons, just say like, hey, you don't even have to be that good at Baron Baits. Just you can kill in five seconds. So it's good for the team that's less better or worse in late game. Yeah, and it's kind of good in both situations because if you are good at that sort of stuff anyway, it's just going to make it even easier for you. So we'll have a look at what's going on in the early itemization. No surprises for these junglers. Tracker's knife done for Lee. Looks like he's got the Warrior Enchant already and a Hunter's Potion for Ambition plus the CDR boots and eventually he'll get a Cinder Hulk by the looks of things. Eventually. There's no rush. No rush for all that. Yeah, I've heard uh, different schools of thought where you just go for items first because Cinder Hulk is a scaling item and gives you bonus HP based on how much you already have and stuff. So from memory, Yankos got his really late last yes, game. Yes, he did. Like went two items and then got it as Ryu looking for Crown, but Ambition going to turn it around. Yankos here, but Crown already taking it real. Yankos forced to flash and Crown not going to chase, but this keeps happening, I feel like. People face check Crown's Cassiopeia, he gets kills. Yeah, it was just disrespectful. It was way too forced. Uh, Crown had already chunked out Ryu a large amount before that uh, and got him underneath turret. So Ryu was already in a bad position. 
And I don't know if they actually saw Ambition cross mid or not earlier. Yeah, but even if you saw him, I think that was like really just awful. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Just get the flash. She still has funds up. Like, what are you trying to get out of this? Ryu is just very just underperforming right now. A little too aggressive, perhaps. His ambition gets special without a forgiven, but I'll defend. No, maybe not. Catch on. Forgiven. Should be okay as he shields out. And when we have a quick lull in the action, we do have a question actually out from Twitter. At lol Timo Stream asks. One sec. Ooh, that was great. Buffer Thunder and Glow. Okay, he's out. So, what goes into deciding on jungle pathing when your team starts grouping? So, obviously, early game, there's lots of different things you can do, but you're kind of free reign to take them. When you start grouping, like, do you have to give up the camps to your lane? Is kind of what happens there as far as mid, mid to late game decision making for pathing goes. Is Ryu does get a nice kill on Ambition. Yeah, for the pathing, once it gets to the group part, you, you need to give away one side of your jungle. I, I, normally, I take like two camps and then I group with my team. I, I can't get greedy for the full clear unless I'm Hecarim or someone who's gonna 1v5 so I don't even need my team. But if I'm like a team-based jungler, I need to give one side away. We use that again. Makes sense, yeah. There's a couple kills traded in mid lane. This crown does take one down. Yankos in looking for top side once more. Kube gonna get kicked. Yeah, they're just push tower. Yeah. That's really good. Smart stuff. Kube can't really do too much yeah. and does get tagged. That's gonna be a kill. Very nice from Yankos. It's pretty scary for uh, Samsung, actually, because this is a lane you need to have a little bit of advantage in, but if you're getting destroyed top lane, it, well, the Rumble's just going to team fight better and the Jace can't be split again against the Rumble, so... Really good pressure by Jankos. He's actually... How does he get first blood every time? That's what I want to know. I don't know. The first blood king! It's actually just like... It's every time I'm watching, it's like, oh, Jankos got first blood. Yeah, he's insane. He's just so clean at, like... He, his early pathing is really smart, and he knows which lanes are the most gankable, too. Looks like he's looking good. And uh, has two kills already, so kind of in position, so consider to influence the early stages of this mid-game. Does have a Hex Trinker, so building a bit more aggressively. As far as overall Lee Sin builds go, we don't tend to see your, you know, maybe classic solo queue, super aggressive team at style builds. Usually one or two damage items, usually Warrior, and then just the more of our Mordius, and then you kind of build whatever you think your team needs from that point. Yeah, most of the part, you need to go into tanky after that because you just start falling off. Once the other team gets items and your level advantage isn't as strong as it was before, it just you need to start going tanky and default into the, being the frontliner. But right now, you need a all-in damage. Get them all. That's your strongest point in the game is when you get that mall. You need to make as many aggressive plays as possible because once that pl after like the second you buy the mall, you're just going to go going down after that. Yeah, you, it's kind of that. Uh, people say power spike all the time where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, he just increased in power. This is kind of like an actual power spike where you go up and then it goes down immediately afterwards. So you kind of spike the other direction as the game progresses. Yeah, normally Maw is the last aggress uh, offensive item you're going to build on Lee Sin too, so he just needs to make the most out of it. And he's playing 2v2 top, which is the way to play this. I think their 2v2 is extremely strong. and. I like this a lot, actually. He kind of mentioned that 1v1, Olaf, of course, is going to beat you up. That's kind of his job as a jungler, but playing 2v2 with your rumble that you have already helped Snowball with the first blood seems to make sense. Unfortunately for them, Invade isn't going to quite work out. And of course, going to dip now towards this bottom side of the map and maybe look for something else. He's gone mid, but that kind of went wrong. Uh, maybe could look for bottom lane, but I think the rest of the lanes are sort of floating and relatively happy with the situation. Yeah. Vander maybe not as happy as he does take some poke there. It looks like Inferno Drake spawning again, so hopefully H2K tries to secure this one because getting one Inferno Drake is very necessary. The other team's going to get two, and they have a Rumble who's going to have his Leandries, hopefully. I think he has on this buy. Okay, cool back. Crown takes that blue. Does he not have it? Okay, no, I think it. he just bought uh, Sword sword Boots. That's, it's okay, but... Having that Leandris would have been game changing that fight, but still, they can easily win this fight with Rumble Ulti. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is just uh, something that I was calling for, kind of old school. Uh, well, that's the last time they that they saw, saw the Olaf. So, really, really Raptors. They... Yeah, so he goes Raptors, and we actually can't show it completely because the fight's happening. Ooh, I'm making trouble. <laughs> He's going to die. Ulti committed there from Odo Omni. Ah, that ulti. Oh. Nice. <laughs> All right, this is really good by them. Like, once you, they need to start playing objective wise, use those kills to push it for objectives like dragons, towers. If they start playing like this, they can easily beat this Korean team. Yeah, 
but actually Crown's gonna collapse for it now because they're kinda caught in the draw. They can't they can't abandon him completely there. Yeah, he's, he's, gonna, gonna, he's gonna get it. Hops out. out. He has no way out. Oh no, he's been locked up. So he actually has no way out at that point because he had to use his safeguard to get out and then he used his Q to get back in and he just already has his flash, so it's unfortunate. Kind of, it's kinda of the situation like this is for you team. Yeah, <laughs> don't you put guys it to waste. Left me. Rise didn't even think of realm warping me out. What a yeah. what an ass. <laughs> uh, anyway, like this was the the eight of uh, like nine minute play yeah. here. So last time they actually saw ambition was he does the raptors. He just gets that one, and then right here they actually don't see him go across and he hugs it, and then they don't see him cross the mid lane either. So last time they saw ambition was on that top left side jungle, and so when Crown gets engaged on and actually wraps to the right side. They're, they're like, oh, he, he's done, right? Because you usually play to the side that your jungler is on. They're like, oh, we got him. They do not expect the ambition to come from this direction, and that's why it was a play like that. Because basically by all kind of uh, books for jungling, you had that river completely warded. You would have seen him sneak in, and how did he get across that fast? So that's why that one happened. Just wanted to actually go back about six cool. minutes and talk about that one, because... That's what they were inferring from the information, mm -hmm. and Ambition kind of played around that. Great pocket of vision abused there by Ambition. So again, been playing for a long time, very experienced, clearly has all those little things on track, and super creative counter gank there. Again, from a very kind of cerebral style jungler. As it stands though, uh, HK actually are ahead, and the Infernals are even, so things are looking good. So as you kind of move into the mid game as a jungler, everyone knows your early game is super impactful, very important to try and get things going. We've seen that from Yonkos with his ganks and Ambition, with a lot of his pathing and checking. Kind of what happens as a jungle when you move to maybe the mid game now, because you obviously, you know, you want to help secure objectives with your smite, you want to get some vision down, but what are the goals, not just maybe generally, but also of the champion series? I mean, Yanko's going to try and dive and get something started here, but I'll zone yeah. them off the turret. Uh, you want to try to secure the objectives and make plays for your team. You actually usually lose out on being a source of DPS. You're a very big source of DPS early on, but in the mid game, you kind of just become the guy who, if you get kills, it's not that great. Yeah. Unless, unless you're playing Rengar, you know, no, in Ori. <laughs> Hecarim. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know anyone that plays those in one. But like, if you're setting up uh, your lanes right now, you're like, okay, I want Rumble to get this kill, or I want the Rise to get the kill. like, Or even the Sivir in this composition, because he's really one of the only sources of physical damage. Um, looks to be in trouble. No, not enough. Koto J actually there to defend, and plant damage is nice. So to Omni dead, 1v1 is awfully awkward. And HK, I like to play for the mid out of tarot, but good counter from Samsung, and then just kind of didn't take the bait and stayed in their mid lane as long as they needed to. And actually, Ambition's getting work done down here as well. Yeah, this game actually feels like Yankos versus the solo laners of Samsung. That's what last game felt like. Because, <laughs> like, he's got four kills. Crown, on the other hand, four kills. His top laner just died solo, so as a jungler, you're trying to plug all of these holes where your mid lane seems to be outmatched, your top lane seems to be outmatched. Uh, and the enemy jungle is kind of just playing around the fact that you're tied up, so you can't really play against the enemy jungle. You have to play against the solo laners. That's kind of sad. Looking at this, the only people I think that are on par with the Koreans right now are Forgiven and Jankos. And you can't win 2v5 in these kind of games, so... It's just how the game plays out. Hopefully they can use their teamwork. And then you perhaps make a team fight work and... Snowball that. Yeah, and I will say when a Cassiopeia has four kills, it's definitely more preferable than a Lee Sin. Not just from like a basic standpoint of, oh, the Cassiopeia has gold and she has a lot of damage. It's much easier to play through a mid laner than it is to play through your jungler. Like people always say, play to your winning lane. If your jungler is winning, he can kind of spread it around everywhere. But when it's something like a Lee Sin, you hit mid game, you can't really play through that as easily as before because the other guy is just way better with the gold. Uh, and it just kind of comes back down to that, right? Like, Ruler, he's down in CS, doesn't matter. He can go play through Crown. He can go to Crown's lane, and he's kind of protected there, and he just gets to uh, kind of siege that turret down. Whereas if Yankos wants to do the same thing, a Lee Sin plus a Rise versus an Olaf plus, like, a, a Cassiopeia, you don't really get too much done in that situation. So, honestly, being able to play through your lanes is very important, and he can't do that right now. We'll finally get the mid turret though, and actually maybe still a blue buff here as well. So HUK kind of doing what they need to do and play up and aggressive in the lanes. Blue buff went to Ryu actually. So, oh, maybe to Yankos, but good. Yeah, it was Yankos. So good donation there, and Ryu already has a blue. So stealing one away from Crown's very nice. And as I'm talking about, like, he can't play through his lane. They get the mid turret, which is incredibly important to get down. Uh, it opens up the map, and that's what allows them to get those wards on the right side and get that blue buff. So now nothing should really take H2K by surprise. That maybe this is fucked up again. <laughs> Jin ulti, ooh, is enough. Core JJ picks up Vanda. These supports are awfully squishy. He's forgiven, forced to burn the sums, and Ambition is going to run straight at him. That feels so bad. 
Yeah. But, shouldn't take them by surprise, but they just get completely run down there. Oh, well, Mel's still struggling and probably took a little bit of pick. We did see this from Yankos in the last game, although Odo going to get soloed again. My god, Kuve. Yankos going to try and answer. Great Q flash in. Kickback tower is going to do some damage, and that is a kill for Yankos. That's like the worst feeling. The lanier caffeine is starting to get solo killed. Mm -hmm. It's just. It shows how like outclassed they are right now. It's just. I mean, even behind, they can still beat you 1v1. You first blooded that lane. Yeah. I mean, it's also the matchup, too. Like, Jace is just kind of bonkers against all the top laners right now. Mm -hmm. He's not much you can do about him. We talked about power points earlier for Lee Sin, and that more is not quite there yet. In fact, Yanko's kind of audible, and he's going for a bit more tanking. He's kind of realizing that maybe the game is at a point where he'll need to team fight or skirmish uh, maybe sooner than he would have liked. But Olaf is an interesting champion to me as far as scaling goes, because it feels like at some point you like you have this super tanky juggernaut style pick that can just run down the back line. But in theory, from at least from the jungle perhaps, maybe due to the gold you get, that's not kind of how it works out. And from just watching Ambition there run in and just take out a carry, I feel like he's strongest right now. Is that an accurate read about kind of how Ambition's feeling as far as his current power goes? Uh, he's hit his spike where he has 20% CDR or 30% CDR. I, he might have max here if I check his runes really quickly. Uh, no, he doesn't. So he's, he's about 30% CDR at the moment between his boots, his spirit visage, and then his runes. Uh, and that's very important because now he just picks up the axe and it's immediately off cooldown. So that's really how he gets his damage out is having more CDR. Uh, and then from there he just gets tanky. So it doesn't really increase his damage from that point on. Whereas 80 carries will increase their damage and try to just get through your durability. So there's a point in the game where you can just run at and solo kill uh, almost all 80 carries. And then it just turns around on you in yeah. the late game. Ooh, hello. Well, let's talk about HK's Dragon Control. They've got two in a row. Oh, but uh, Samsung got the first one. However, looks like they might lose this Baron as HK do spot it out, but that's already far too late. Baron over to Samsung Galaxy. Nice little call there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, seriously, seriously, that's really, really good. The last oh, one, yeah. I, I don't even know if they saw them actually enter that area. What's um, going on in this game? It's the I Korean team's prioritizing objectives yeah. over kills. It's like, it, I mean, I think that H2K would win if the game was Team Deathmatch, yeah. uh, but it's not. It's about these objectives, and they're not prioritizing them, and they're not playing around them. I can't tell if it's a teamwork thing or if it's a conscious choice. I think maybe it's nerves. They look a bit shake. Like, Bander and Oda not play, playing that well, and you really need all five players to play the best. Like, when you look at Rockstress SKT, SKT that series, each player pulled their own weight. Like, no player was slacking, and that's kind of like what you need to be Korean teams. You can't be slacking. One player can't be the one who's like, oh, I can't compete against my counterpart. You all have to be able to compete against your counterparts. And if you're not able to, then Korean teams will snowball that one advantage, and you'll just lose all that. I think a, a perfect example of that is EDG with Koro or Mouse. Like, it's that pain point where uh, you have to be able to just be able to fight the guy one on one, and if there's already a kind of a weak point or a dagger in your side, they know how to twist it and make it just completely over at that point. So you can't have any weak spots, like you were saying. And I think so. This gate is hurt. Safety gate. The Yankos again going to try and make a play. Plant. That's rude. <laughs> Blocks the Q from coming in. Don't yeah. see that one too much, but always fun when it comes up. And plants are plants are really unfun to play against. Those things really suck. Unless you're the Zara player, then they're amazing. Then they're amazing, yeah. I don't think that's the face check this Cassia. Oh, oh, oh. He wants Ooh. it. Oh, he's trying to get very cute. Too cute, in fact. Yankos knocked up. Crown's actually getting locked up by Ryu, but Ruler's taking out the drums. And now they'll chase in. Flash towards Ryu. And now the uh, ulti bullets from Jing are going to try and lock one down. They've found Forgiven. Van are going to tank these up as best he can. But there's actually Odo Omne getting the kill onto Crown. I think time's a little too deep for those kills. So a one for one trade, but Samson Galaxy still with the Baron and the advantage. Yeah, I think Yankos was just trying to go for a really cool play there. This is a montage he's uh, trying to make. Yeah. He was hoping it would ulti and uh, Yeah, he was trying to get a kickback, but he went to the left side of the wall, Crown didn't walk forward towards his team, and Crown played it really well and went backwards. Uh, just completely threw him off there. Yeah, really nicely done, but I, I respect Jankos just, like trying at least. You yeah. Know, he knows uh, it's up to him to do this. And, uh, yep. And that's the thing, is he's trying to do all that he can, right? So you have to respect that. You can't just be like, oh man, he sucks. It's like, at least he's trying, man. He knows he has to make those kind of plays where if he doesn't, his team can slowly lose the game. 
is that pressure too. That can really crack a player, make a jungler do things like that. Because now he falls behind and now he's probably in the mindset that, oh man, I'm two levels down on this Olaf. What, how does he get back in the game? Does he start farming and neglecting his team? Does he have to make even more plays when he's at a disadvantage, even in just raw stats? Uh, I think you still, at this point, gold on you is pretty irrelevant. You're still going to perform the same job relatively. I think just give all your camps to your carries who can carry late game and just keep performing the job you can do where it's like you're going to try to kick someone into your team. And I think he's just going to keep trying that. Maybe if he can get a pick on Jace, that'd be good, but... Yeah, there's been multiple problems here. Cordo J going to get chunked out for given. Block the last bullet. But it sounds like Alexi just setting up a long term siege. Now Kube going to be the target. Going to go back in onto Odo. Try and outplay 1v2. That damage is absurd, but Yankos God. cleans up the trade. Kube has the most solo kills out of anybody. At How? So, How did this happen? And he just added two more this game. <laughs> Maybe even three. He's, he added three? I think he, I think he might have added three. I know he got two. It's actually, it's probably two. I don't know about you guys, yeah. when I was uh, watching Samsung Worlds before Worlds, many, many weeks ago now, I was watching QA play and I was just like, he's okay? Yeah. He's like kind of a role player, I don't really get it. And then late in Swords Regionals and now in Worlds, he's just this beast. Yeah. I don't know if like, he just didn't get to play characters before and could only play Shen, there or if he's just, I don't know what it is, but Kube is continuing to impress me, and the sheer amount of stuff this guy gets on 1v1, with players like Smeb and Duke still in the tournament. Oh, sorry, in the tournament, now one of them still is. Potentially his finals opponent is just amazing to me. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing for me is there's a lot of uh, theories floating around, like, hey, the team is undefeated with Core JJ. Like, okay, I, I get that. I, I can understand that. Like, they went, what, 4-0 in their last, like, last few games and stuff to up to this point it's like they're just absolutely tearing through worlds at the moment and people are saying like oh cube is playing better is it because core jj's attitude is it because he's not alongside wraith or anything like that i just think the guy like legitimately is playing better and the meta shifted into his favor like kennen rumble jace none of these guys were things that you would play before the echo which he just performed really well on yes but well, great play there from Yankos. Does get the kick in, but Kube wants blood. Oh my god, he's aggressive. He's got to get in front of him. It could be a problem. He's still diving in. Damage is there as Odo Odo's does take him out. But great lockdown there from Core JJ. Ulti oh. is going to counter back, but that's a snipe down. Two kills there for Samsung Galaxy as they trade in an ambition. He smells blood, but the rest of HGK will get away this time. Yankos I mean, Yankos job. can't fault him, right? He's doing exactly yep. what he needs to do, but I think his team's just maybe a little too far behind at this point. No, I thought it was really good by him. It was pretty clean too, and he played it really well. It's just, yeah, you gotta make plays like this if you wanna win. If the other team's just slowly out macroing you, you gotta make these desperate plays. Yep. Cube rushes in and flashes over afterwards. That was, Gets a little that was really good. Oda Omne, I can't tell if his equalizer is still coming off the cooldown and now it's finally just up, because it could have been a good disengage tool ahead of time. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was up because there wasn't much action before it. Well, he, that top lane. He had just gotten killed top, right? I don't know if that happened. Oh, it's relatively short cooldown. Once you hit 11, it's like seven. It's like 90 seconds. So you get like 10% CDR, and yeah, it's pretty short cooldown. I think he had it, but it was good. He sacrificed himself. I think it's good. I, I guess <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, sacrificed himself so his team can live kind of the story for HGK at the moment. It's just like, you know, they're doing things as best they can. Oh, yeah. But uh, not always going to be amazing. As I think We do have a check, I believe. Yeah, yeah. He, status. As he was walking up, it went 3-2-1. And as he came around the corner, though, he had it already. So he actually held it for about three or four seconds before he threw it out. Yeah, he probably could have used it earlier, huh? Yeah. Regardless, still, they trade two for two. And even trade, that's fine. You're killing people who are higher level, so you get more experience out of it. Baron is up now as well, so H2K gonna have to fight their one true rival, the Baron Control. Oh god, yeah, it's been their weak point pretty much all year. H2K don't really play around the Baron too well, and I can't tell if it's really, you know, maybe their jungler doesn't just play around that side of the map at those times and stuff, or if it's really like, they just don't have the wards from Vander and Yankos combined to make it happen. I think it's kind of like a mix of both. One start. Yeah, if you guys just get out. But again, Samsung happy just to keep poking them down. How do you feel about this? Because I see Lee Sin's do it all the time where they just sit on their warding trinket the entire game. Uh, whereas yesterday, we even saw Peanut go for the, the Oracle's augmentation. So I've seen both, but most seem to just sit on this. 
Um, let's see this right now. Yank off, oh. kicks crowd, finds something, but not going to get in range for a smite back. Dust plates is not going to kill him, but Ruler's last shot certainly will. Kuve diving into the back again. Forgive us, trying to 1v1 him, and he's not going to win because Kuve is doing ridiculous amounts of damage. Temps on Galaxy. Ruler goes down, but they run over the rest of the They're team fight. So Kuve needs a snipe. Ryu almost takes him out, but Kuve decides to back off from that last kill. Oh, they're all so low. No. If, <laughs> if like one thing changes, if if you get that kick back, if Yankos has flash or something and he gets that kick back, it's like it's over. You know that thousand gold behind if you know Kuve's not an absolute monster after getting two solo kills. Like there are so many what ifs in this game for HUK, but Samsung Galaxy proving time and time again that we're a good team. Most importantly, when they get a lead, they just run with it very, very quickly towards your Nexus. I don't know if it's worse that H2K get like a large advantage early and they're like stopping them in kills, they get first blood, and then they lose. Like, which is worse, to actually have your hands kind of around the game and you just let it slip through, or to lose from the get-go? Because this just feels tragic. I'm gonna look at Kuba here. I think getting the early game advantage just gives you more pride, you know? You're like, hey, we can actually like do something and it's not like you're just losing from the start. But yeah, it's pretty depressing to lose like that though, where it's like you had it in your hands and you just couldn't. Yeah, and I think, I think this game more than anything, like they did have an early lead, but it wasn't as big as the last game. And it was kind of concentrated just on the jungle spot. And Yankos, he can only do so much as a lead sin. And Samsung Galaxy kind of started winning their other lanes. And that's been the big thing for HUK. They win all their lanes usually in Snowball a game. And they did have some bright spots in both this game and the last game, but Samsung some proved that maybe even in lane, they're maybe just a bit classier of a team. And certainly as a team, we know they're better. That's actually a very good point because HUK have been drafting four lanes the entire tournament and they've been getting 20 CS advantages. And when you look at how many winning lanes they have here, I wouldn't call bottom a winning lane for them. I don't call top a winning lane for them. Mid lane, I actually think that Cassiopeia has kind of been the rise counter for a very long time. Uh, but this new reworked rise has a little bit more of an edge and the ability to actually stay in it. But I still feel like Samsung just have winning lanes across the board. Yeah, definitely. I think rise gets kind of destroyed by Cassio. Oh, oh hello. Right in the back. They're very creative. They got one. It's Kodo Day going down on the Zyra crown, fighting out exhausted, is maybe going to go down, but he pops the Seraphs. Yankos trying to get his way back in, but it's a bloodbath in the back end of the fight. Oh my god, uh. forgiven. Sniped by Kuve, and this is a slaughter. Yeah. Samsung Galaxy just break right through the middle, almost fairly literally. Oh, they break through the top, they come back to the middle, the tower's so low, they just pick it up, and it just looks like Samsung are just dominating this game, but it, they lost that fight. <laughs> it's like uh, they busted through the window, like smashed it in, like wrecked your house, and then like came back and also kicked the front door down. Oh it's like, God. you have an entry! <laughs> Stop, Stop <laughs> destroying my house! The but door's right there! That's kind of what it feels like <laughs> happening. And at this point, HDK maybe even left it ajar, and Samsung just kind of walked in, because they're so far ahead. Like, it was cool to track the early stage of this jungle matchup, but Ambition is so strong now. Yankos, on the least in especially, was never going to quite win this 1v1. He's going to show some flair. Yeah, he's <laughs> Flash it up, Ambition's just like, I'm out, see ya. <laughs> Jank Jank off. says, not today. And Ambition's like, fine, I'll take your crumb. But yeah, going back to your question about the wards, um, pretty much, you keep the warding and the green. Alright, let's see. I guess we'll wait for this. I mean, almost unfortunately here. for the junglers, not too much they can do here. They're kind of just doing whatever. That Ambition's hitting whatever Kuve wants him to hit, and Yankos is trying to kick somebody back in, but Samsung's plan this far ahead is a little more effective than HUK's plan, despite the creative realm warp initiation. Yeah, it's actually, they actually trade uh, two for three in favor of HUK, because Crown gets killed by Yankos right off screen. So they end up with a positive there. Going again. Oh, he's te teleports into the back. Oh my god, kick. that was almost amazing. But he's locked down, now he's gonna die, I think. GA is gonna revive him. Bullet's still flying in. Last one's gonna be aimed. Ooh, tried to snipe a carry. Yankos though dies to Kuve. And we should now gonna run in. Just pops the ulti. Crown's gonna lock him down with the miasma. Pops the ulti just for a bit of funsies and kind of create a zone and some slowing. And yeah, this is just difficult to say the least for H2K. Kuve runs in, heal up from Ruler, and they're gonna try and snipe one down. Odoano is gonna eat this crit bullet, and there's Ruler with a kill. 1200 damage to the little rumble. Forgiven's dead. That's an ace and Sam. Song Galaxy in style are up 2-0 in the series. My goodness. Yeah, you can even tell from the body language of Yankos and just having his brow slightly furrowed and all that. Like, 
it's just not a good game for him. He just feels like he's trying to do everything that he can, and it's just a very stressful situation to be in because he has to almost, like we talked about carrying your teammates, he has to actually pick up their slack, and they keep making mistakes despite him doing well. Yeah, it looked like they were definitely out of class. Like, when you're capping a lane, and then the lane starts getting solo killed, it's like, what's even the point, you know? Yeah. I, like, you need that one lane that you're putting so much pressure into Snowball. Like, it's kind of team effort, and I think top lane was lacking. Like, you don't have to kill your counterpart, but you need to, like, survive. I think you can be smart enough with advantage where you can survive and look for those team fights with Rumble, but he just kept getting solo kill. He got greedy for backs, and that's just how it turned out. And it's going to be super interesting to kind of watch the next game, because I think a lot of that was just, like, H2K being very strong mechanical players. They've shown how talented they are, but... In a lot of ways, yes, beating him in these kind of micro spots 1v1, but really just beating him around the map. We saw Ambition sneak beautifully around all the vision there to kind of get that surprising counter gank on the right hand side of mid that gave Crown a bit of a leg up in his matchup. And then Sun Fog is going to be awfully fun. That will, of course, be coming up next, but kind of dive into a little more jungle. We never got to answer the question, so let's hit the warding trinket just again for Leaf. Oh, yeah. So, pretty much <laughs> the warding thing is you want a green and a yellow because you can ward jump and ward for vision, so you have to have two, so you have pretty much like four wards on you, so you have two to three to ward and one for reward jump, so that's why they keep it, but relatively you need to have a red string to control Baron, and that's probably why their Baron control is so bad, but if you really want to like go for ward jumps, you need to keep the yellow one for the ward jumps, because you can't keep vision and ward jump at the same time. Kind gotcha. Of thing. Okay. I mean, it makes sense, but I think it does just kind of tell you how tricky things have gotten back and forth. Other than that, though, I think pretty standard jungle matchup, all the firstly sin. Do we feel like we learned anything from these players? Yankos, still the first Blood King, looking very good on that front. But Ambition, there's something about this guy that really impresses me, but I'm actually, it's hard for me to quantify. I'm curious if you guys have any thoughts on Ambition's style or the level of play, because I feel like he's had a really good tournament. Yeah, I think he has a very high level of play. I don't think he's flashy. No. I think that's the thing, is he's actually he's very, he's very calculated, where if he is spotted on Vision or anything like that, it's like, okay, where's the point that they do not expect me to be next? And he'll actually approach from that angle. And that's something that, you know, with God Vision that we have and, like, seeing people and not their Fog of War Vision is actually very important. And he plays that. He plays around the knowledge that his team, uh, that the enemy team has and knows that they don't expect him from that angle. Well, we're not going to get that Vision next game because in just a few minutes, Froggen is going to rejoin the cast for a special single team focus. We'll turn on the Fog of War and see game through to Samsung Galaxy's eyes only. For now, though, we're going to send you back to Madison Square Garden where the Analyst Desk is continuing their discussion on Samsung.